Yo, yo, grind face, man. If y'all ain't seen the video, man, it's a Long Beach officer. But he was singing uh, one of the uh, Jodeci. Jodeci song? Yeah. Yo, yo, Jason, what's you, going on, man? You guys thought I was going to let you down. Uh, yeah, I, thought, I thought you was going to let that. I saw that. I saw it right when I was trying Salute. to log in, man. Yes, sir, man. We seen the video, man. We telling everybody about the video, man. You singing that um, Jodeci song, man. What you know about Jodeci, man? L little 90s R&B is what I grew up on. As a matter of fact, I think I made two babies to that song, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everybody don't know. I think we all tried to make a couple of them to that shit right there, man. All right. But all you right. was on like point with that. I heard you get on the microphone. You got a little tune on you. <laughs> you got a little soul in there. It's funny because my girl said I was out of tune, and I was like, "No, I thought I was really in tune," you know. So she I was kind of hating on you. She know what you did, you know. What I mean? uh, that's all right. How you gentlemen doing? Oh man, we're doing great. Good. We're doing great, man. We just about yeah. to uh, tap in one more person so we get this conversation going. I'm trying to figure it all figure all this out. There's a lot going on. Wait, somebody said I should sing right now. I'm not ready. For oh, that. oh, yeah, you got to prove yourself, man. You got to prove I'm yourself. Not, you that, you not might not be ready. the same guy in that video, man. Oh, snap. I know I had sunglasses. <laughs> Look, turn it on. Turn it on. Get a That's single true. on. Practice. I had sunglasses on. Oh, man. You guys are going to get me. I'm getting. Oh, wow. Yeah, we Look, got a doctor. lady that just showed up. We got hello, a doctor in hello, here. Hello, hello. Hi, Doc. Hey, I love the video. I love the video yet. and how you are interacting with the community. Thank you. It's the first time I've ever done it. Was I okay at that? You were definitely Man. okay. <laughs> you were definitely okay. You did better than me. <laughs> All right. And good I, stuff. You know, now, now how did that, how you go it. about that video? How how did you find yourself on on this video on our page, man? Did somebody send you the video? Um, a lot of people sent me the video. I I never be I'll be quite honest, I didn't know anything about Grindface. That's my fault. I'm I'm up on it now. Um <laughs> but I, I, I learned about it and you know I'll tell you, the video was, I, I drive up and down the boardwalk in Long Beach every once in a while. I supervise police officers in that area. And I find it interesting that I, we work around a lot of people that don't see very much value in police community relations, right? Yes. And, um, and I'm not talking about police officers as much as I'm talking about community members who see a lot of negative in police, right? And so because they see that negative, oftentimes, you know, they're, they're not... They, they don't appear to be waving at us with all five fingers, right? So exactly. um, so sometimes that become takes a little bit of a toll. So what I do personally is I drive down the, the, uh, the boardwalk down by the beach and I get to see um, a, a, a more reflective overall group of people because I'm not responding to a 911 call. So I see all different kinds of people out there and most of them are waving at me and saying hi and I get the ability to wave back and say hi. And so that's a big push for me is to be able to go out there and engage in community policing. Now, when I was out there, I happened to see somebody that I had some relations with in traditional policing, a guy from a, a, who used to be from a gang who I used to actually arrest, who played a cat and mouse game for a number of years. And he, he sells lemonade now. And, um, and so I saw him and he was playing some really nice jams and I pulled over. And it was the first time I seen this lemonade stand. It was a, a new lemonade stand. Um, and I just, I heard the jams and I was like, you know what? I'm going to show him that I'm here to respect him for who he is now. And so exactly. I, I, I picked up the PA system and gave him just a, a couple of bars. Cause if I, <laughs> if I went too long, I went too long on the PA system. Right. Then it changes the game. There's a lot of, you know, as a police officer, there's a fine line between being professional and being unprofessional. And so I didn't want to sit there and sing all day long or, or appear to be wasting taxpayer money yeah. because the community policing stuff that I do, it's honestly in short spurts because I'm busy doing traditional law enforcement work as well. 
it's hard to do to do both and really kind of know where to where to draw the line but it was awesome i got out i bought some lemonade as a matter of fact i bought a bacon wrap hot hot dog from his wife who was selling him next door or his lady who was selling him next door the whole thing was pretty epic it was just a good overall experience and i'm so fortunate to have experiences like that i would say almost every day of my career um and and it's not about to me it's not about always putting them on video or 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 taking pictures although that is how we spread trust now because if you look at this live there's 301 people on here that are listening to a police officer speak about community police relations and i'm the same guy that could be pointing a gun at a felony suspect tomorrow right so we got to be able to have this balance and this balance is what builds trust and what helps us with unity so when we sit there and we try and better understand and seek to understand those who we might not want to we mm. do better off so a lot of us on this live may not like the police well you can't not like the police because the police represent 800,000 people. You might not like one or two cops or maybe 15 ideas that you've seen, but you can't not like the police. That's like me saying, I don't like people of color. That would be exactly. ridiculous, right? Yeah. It, I, I love people of color and I've had to arrest people of color. I've also had to arrest white people, but just because I arrest somebody doesn't mean they're a bad person. And what I tell children when I arrest their, um, when I arrest their parents, unfortunately, is I take a knee and I get down to that child's level um, and, and I, I, I try not to do it in front of their children. But if we have to, the first thing I tell the child is, hey, your mommy or daddy's not a bad person. They just somebody believe they made a bad decision right now, but it doesn't make them a bad person. They'll be back here to love you very soon. So those kinds of things are really important because we create these longstanding ideas about police community relations and they just create fear. And fear is the root of all acts of violence. And that's what I that's what I want to see. Stop. Yeah. So I have a question and I like I like everything that you just said because it's so true. You know, we are in a society today where people are teaching their kids that, you know, if you talk to the police, you're a snitch or F12, when in reality, we should be pushing our kids to apply for those positions. You know, my biggest thing being in the community is if you want to be effective and see change, that you have to be a part of that change. And so I like to see police officers when they're out in the community to give people a different perspective as a therapist, you know, just like you had said something, well, you had told my husband that pretty much, you know, there are bad apples in every profession. And I agree. There's therapists that I think I don't understand how you even got licensed. And so <laughs> seeing each individual based on the individual and not based on their profession, I think is key because that's how racism is, you know, manifested. That's how stereotypes are bred. When you generalize a group of people instead of seeing that individual based on their own merits. Yes. Mm. And what, what, what I want to do is I want to show people. So I'm from New York City, New York. And um, when I when I grew up, I grew up around men and women of color. And it helped me to better understand a little bit more about the culture. I'll never pretend to know what it feels like to be a person of color because I'm not. But I have a little tiny bit of an understanding. And I think that people that come in um, from within the community and they grew up in the community, they get to serve as police officers they have a tendency to be the most effective. It doesn't mean you can't come from outside and learn quickly and try and try and get to that level. But in Long Beach, the goal of the Long Beach Police Department, one of the goals and, and Chief Luna is to be able to recruit from within, to have Long Beach born and bred people that come up and become police officers because they already know what's going on on this street corner. They already know this mom. They already know this grandmother. They already know this child. They already know this, this, this um, atmosphere. They already know the climate and the culture. But how do we do that if we come back to that original idea that we talked about where we are we are trained not to not to like the police or respect the police or trust the right. police? Why would I want to do something when everybody's speaking poorly of it? And if everybody's speaking poorly of it in general as a universal idea, then we're never going to get inner city community members um, in, in the numbers that we want them to be at. And that's going to become a big problem, right? Because that's what we need. Well, if that's what we need and we're not, we're not doing one side of the equation, we're never going to get past that equal sign. That equal sign is going gonna, is gonna to turn into something horrible and we're not going to get it. So what I'd like to see happen is I'd like us to stop holding up the signs that say F the police and start holding up the signs that say F that one guy. Right. Right. Like put that put that guy's name on the sign. Right. But don't say F the police because the police are not the problem. It's individuals in the organization and just a few, just a few small number of individuals in the organization that are making policing look bad. Right. It's like if a police officer ran around saying every gang member is trying to kill a cop, that'd be ridiculous. And police officers are, are, are at a heightened alert when they deal with gang members. And that's like that, that's pretty understandable. But they got to know the majority of gang members are not violent. 
The majority right. of gang members really are not violent. They may pretend to be violent. They may do stuff around violence, but they're the majority of the gang members that I've encountered are pulling guns out and just killing people. And so we have to in, we have to look at people as individuals within the organization or within the group. Now, I am not asking anybody to join a gang, and I'm telling you that gangs are a dangerous <laughs> deal, so be careful. But I'm just saying it's something to think about when, when we look at how we engage with each other. And that comes from literally comes from us spending time with people that we typically don't want to spend time with. If you don't like the police, you should spend more time with them. If I don't, if you don't like um, gang members, you should spend more time with them. If you don't like therapists, you should spend more time with them. Whatever it is that you don't like, you need to spend more time with that group because in that group are going to be decent people. There's very, very few groups where everybody is just bad. So it's, so it's you're important saying, to think about that. You're saying basically to hang with them and get around them to get a better understanding of what you don't like? So 100%. Hundred percent, because what you don't like is stuff that you you most of the time will realize doesn't really exist. Well, let me and say this: most people that say that they don't like police officers, they probably don't know any personally, and it's based on their experience. True. And another thing, I want to play devil's advocate real quick, um, Sergeant. I want to say like accountability. I think a lot of people's frustration is the fact that many police officers are not held accountable for misconduct. You know, and I think as individuals, like if I see a therapist doing something that is not okay, I'm definitely gonna pull them to the side and have that conversation with them as I would anybody in my personal circle. Do you see yourself doing that? Or are you the type to just turn the other way and say it doesn't have anything to do with me? No, no, turning, mm -hmm. our, back, turning our back now is not okay. As a matter of fact, recently, um, and when I say recently, I'm talking about within the last 15 to 20 years, Police officers that don't report misconduct, but they knew about misconduct are guilty of the exact same issues. So if I show up on scene of a call and I see somebody, for instance, cussing at somebody in a derogatory, disrespectful way, and I just decide to turn around and walk away and that body camera footage gets released, I am guilty of cussing at that person, the person that walked away. I'm guilty of the exact same issue. And a lot of people don't realize that. They also don't realize that. I'm going to give you Long Beach, for instance. Long Beach fires about eight to ten people a year. That's oh, wow. one a month. And so people don't often realize that there is very strong accountability. As a matter of fact, when police officers show up, a lot of people say, oh, the man showed up. I got to listen to the man. Well, the police actually have more laws that they have to abide by than the community has to abide by because they have crimes that occur under the color of authority. And when they are found mm. to have committed those crimes under the color of authority, they have get even a higher sentencing as to what's going on. We saw that in the Derek Chauvin trial, with right. what happened with Derek Chauvin. And a lot of these things are starting to come to the forefront, right? So when we sit there and we look at these different ideas, we want to make sure that the community understands that what happens is we when we see misconduct in the community, we have to report it. We can't say, oh, okay, it's just another cop doing their thing because that's not true. Body cameras are a very, very good positive for both sides. They show right. community members, they show community members making decisions. They also show police officers making decisions. And just for everybody on this, you don't have to worry about most of the time if you're in a major city you don't have to worry about names and badge numbers you don't have to worry about asking police officers for all of that stuff because our stuff is gps tracked now you can literally let the police officer drive away and just stop your car and call 911 and ask to speak to a supervisor no special numbers no nothing i mean there's oh, other wow. ways around it but in the in the simple version you can do that hey i was just stopped at this intersection about 15 minutes ago and i'd like to speak to a supervisor about this incident with this cop now, what oftentimes happens is during a police community contact, we are um, we are fearful sometimes. And it's not like a bad fear, but it's a, it's a type of fear during that contact. And sometimes words are exchanged and sometimes things are done. And sometimes the supervisor will come up and talk to you and say, you know what, here's what the police officer may have been thinking. Here's this, here's that. And that police, that supervisor may be able to explain why the police officer did what they did. And sometimes that's valuable because you go, oh, OK, now I get it. Now right. I understand. But if you don't have that, you don't get to that point, it becomes a problem. And one of the biggest issues that I see right now is police officers, when they watch social media, they're watching um, police officers getting beat up by other people. That's what they watch right. on their social media. When, when, when a lot of men and women of color are watching social media, they're watching police officers beat up men and women of color. And so when you're seeing the negative on it's both sides, you're heightening fear. 
And when you heighten fear, that becomes a problem to an extent, right? So, yeah. so those types of things that we have to look at and say, you know, hey, on social media, what makes a, what, what makes a good story is, uh, unfortunately, you know, violence, right? Um, but we want to be able to show more of the positive. And that's what I saw um, my, when my man uh, put, put me up on the video. That was such a blessing because that's just me having a good time with the community. There's nothing. That's what everybody about. like to see. Truly, that, everybody like good. to see that part. Yeah, where that, you guys that, are interacting with us, like playing basketball with the kids 100%, or whatever. Hundred percent. You guys can scroll my page and look at me doing stuff all day long, but it's not about me. It's about the 800 police officers in Long Beach that are also doing it. And maybe it's not all 800, but there's hundreds of cops in Long Beach doing the stuff I do. It just doesn't make it on social media. It doesn't get audio and video recorded. But just know it's not just the Jason Lehman uh, show. You know, I will I will ask everybody to follow me because I have a public page. Huh? I live with my kids and, and, and my life on social media. So it's Jason Lehman 64, J-A-S-O-N-L-E-H-M-A-N 64. And I'm just really blessed to be here and chat with you guys. Oh, I got we appreciate one more you for coming. Hold on, hold on, man. We got one more. Somebody get in real quick. He got you still got questions. some more time? Yeah. yeah, yeah hey, what, what, what is the Team w, uh, WYSM, man? What's that foundation so, you built? Yeah, so Team WISM is, uh, is for, it stands for Why'd You Stop Me? And Why'd You Stop Me is an organization that I created back in 2012. So for anybody that thinks I created this to try and uh, dispel some of the things that have been going on recently, I've lived this for 10 years. Um, it's an organization that works to try and help us all work together to achieve our greatness. It started out with community training in Long Beach um, at the seventh and ninth grade levels, went into a reentry re and rehabilitation program. We now have the only resisting arrest diversion program for people who have been arrested for resisting arrest. They're able to go through our program in Long Beach and have their case go away because most resisting arrest cases are based off of a misunderstanding, based off of fear on one side or the other, where somebody mouths off to a cop and the cop arrests them. When we, if we could hit the rewind button and just discuss things, it wouldn't have gone that bad. And so mm -hmm. it's important for us to understand how that works, right, and how that, how that happens. So they go through this course. It makes it go away. That's all on the community side. We've trained 40,000 community members to teach them how to cooperate with authority to achieve their greatness. And authority is not the police. Authority is anybody that we should be listening to, our parents, our teachers, our school safety officers, whatever that is, because every impeccable leader has been a great follower, and we want to build leaders. The, in, that community, in that community training, we really emphasize the reporting of police misconduct and explain how to effectively report police misconduct to, to go ahead and, and create that system of change in police officers. And then we train, we train police officers. And this is probably the most important part um, in, in our conversation is we teach police officers a system of procedural justice. We teach police officers the importance of voice and allowing the community to have a voice. We teach neutrality and not only not only just being neutral, but explaining neutrality and really, really living a neutral lifestyle and decision making that's made. We teach trust building systems and we teach how to respect people. See, police officers, they can't get out of the car and expect people to respect them, but they should get out of the car and respect everybody they meet. And that that's because police officers are the trained professionals and respect should be something that police officers don't see as earned. They should give it. They should give it every single time as much as 100%. possible. It, it doesn't mean that they it doesn't mean that they shouldn't be safe because we're not going to jeopardize officer safety. And unfortunately, we're not going to be soft on crime. If you commit crime, um, uh, there are times where you got to go to jail. That's just how it goes. <laughs> right. Um, and so and so when that when that happens, police officers have a job. And I can't ask a police officer not to do their job. That'd be like me going into Burger King and telling the guy that flips burgers, hey, stop flipping burgers because you got to do things differently. Well, no, the dude's got to flip burgers, but he can smile well, would while you he's agree? burgers. He can communicate while he's flipping burgers. So, would you agree that sometimes it's an overdoing of the job? There is an overdoing. There, there has been an overdoing of the job, but now I believe, honestly, there's an underdoing of the job. This last year, I think police officers are actually extremely hesitant to do the job and sometimes that could be uh, that could be dangerous as well in in past years there has been an extreme overdoing of the job at times um there's been disproportionate um issues going on of arrests and things like that and a lot of that was before my time but i understand that i'm a part of that and i understand that i could be judged for that even though i would ask you guys to understand that that's not me right so both sides kind of have to occur you have to look at the look at the next police officer and say hey that's not the one i saw on social media so i shouldn't judge that person specifically for that act i saw on social media i got to know it can happen 
because I saw it physically happen with my eyes. But most but people to... live by uh, birds of a feather flock together. Sure, sure. You but know, that so would somebody be somebody got to be teaching them. This, I just you know? want to say <laughs> this. I think when people, you know, discredit and disrespect the police, I think of the movie Purge. Even when they were saying de defund the police, I thought it was a dumb idea because in everything, everything needs structure, organization, and rules. And if you don't have police to implement certain rules, the world will be chaos. And that's just yeah. the reality. I like the fact that you said you, you do your job because without the police, people say they don't like the police. But if you remove the police, people would be begging for the police to get back on duty. Because there would be so much chaos, so many murders, people robbing people's houses and everything else. And so yeah. we need to be realistic when we say we don't like the police because, again, if you remove that structure, you remove those rules, the world will be a complete chaotic mess. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate that. I think one of those things that we think about is, like, when we see a firefighter, we know what a firefighter can do and we know the capabilities of a firefighter, but we don't think about the fact that firefighters sometimes spray water on the wrong side of a house and let the house burn. Like they accidentally do that. They literally don't spray it in the right location. They don't vent the right location or sometimes they're in the back of the ambulance and they mess up and they don't put on the EKG lead, uh, EKG lead right, or they, they put the wrong medication out there. Those things happen, but they don't get publicized like police officers activities. Neither of those things are good. Firefighters should be doing everything to the to the optimum every single time, right? We should be striving for perfection to, re, to, to reach excellence, right? That's what we should be doing. But when we see these negative acts, they get amplified so greatly in our minds. And I just want to give you guys a couple of numbers that are factual. And people like police officers and therapists, we work off of factual um, um, ideas. And this factual idea is that police officers and community members, they come in contact with each other two million times a day. And during that two million times, we find a few videos that look real bad and we send them viral. But when we send them viral, it makes it look like the majority of police are doing bad. And that's the hard part for me to have to fight from behind the eight ball, right? I got to fight from behind the curve trying to come up and build bonds. I could have been singing in a certain neighborhood or, or getting out with some kids and somebody look at me and look down at the kids and say, do not go towards that police officer. He will kill you. And inside of my head, it makes me want to cry, right? Because, and sometimes I'll be honest with you, sometimes I go home and cry because of some of these issues. And that's the truth. Whether you like, like to believe it or not, I'm six foot four, 300, north of 300 pounds and I cry. And so we sit there and we think about these things. That's hard, but it's also hard on men and women of color that are, that are having issues with police. So I see it on both sides. I see that we have to start working on things a little better, but we really need to do a better job of publicizing the good stuff that's going on. You know, there's less people taking cameras out when I take a knee to give a sticker than there are taking cameras out when I do a traffic stop. That's weird. Mm. That's really, really weird, right? We should be... But it's the narrative people want to push. It's the same right. thing with the narrative that people push with therapy to tell people don't do therapy or you're crazy. That's right. So when, when you're doing something positive, it always comes with, you know, negativity. I'm even looking at the comments and all the negative, like even with Snitch, yeah, you know, they're, Brian they're fighting each snitch, other in right? the comments right so, now. <laughs> so this is my thing. Like, people don't... I'm from the hood, and people don't understand that. I grew up in the hood, was a hood person, and changed my life. And people don't understand the definition of snitching. So let me just clarify. Snitching is when you commit a crime with someone and you both agree on the crime and someone gets caught and then they tell. Another <laughs> reason why right. people don't snitch in the hood is because they basically go back and get revenge for themselves. So a lot of people that's talking about snitching is not going to pull a gun, has never even pulled a gun, but they're talking about snitching. So those are the street rules when you talk about snitching is because people are going to vindicate themselves. Now I got too much to lose to vindicate myself. I'm calling the police. When you don't have anything to lose and you're willing to kill somebody and do a life sentence, I can see where you're coming from. But me personally, I have way too much to lose. So people need to understand those terms when they're talking, because many times they're talking and they don't even know what they're talking about. That's right. And some people, somebody just said, um, to be to be quiet and more rude words just now, if you were from the hood, you wouldn't be talking you wouldn't be talking to the cops. Well, I don't know who that person is, but if if that person was getting chased down the street by somebody with a hatchet and there was nobody to call, they'd need the police, right? Like you have to call the cops. Not a, it doesn't matter if you're in the hood in Beverly Hills or anything else. We are here to help. And I have made it my goal to work in what people would consider the hood in central Long Beach for years now. And I've found 
that, you know, there's a bunch of great people in every neighborhood. And those great people have, um, they have issues because of the decisions of a few. So when people are saying, hey, if you were from the hood, you'd never call the cops. That's not the decision of the majority of the people in the hood. That's one person that just needs, I, that I need to spend some more time with. Like, I want to spend time with that person. I don't know who that person is, but send me a direct message. Let's go out. I'll grab coffee. I'll buy you dinner. Let's hang out. You could tell me F me for the whole hour, and I'll still hang out with you. Like, let's, let's chill. Because as long as you don't try to hurt me, as long as you don't do that kind of stuff, I'm going to try to spend more time with you. Because that's what I preach. I preach that we have to get past this stuff. It's not okay for us to do that. And some of these comments are so scary to me because they it's, show it's, that. It's, 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 but the crazy thing is, if Grindface posts something that's positive, they, they, well, they're in the comments, they say he never posts anything positive, but when he does, they, it, it gets no attention. But then they're so negative in the, in the comments, but to me, that's just, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to the people following Grindface. If you're so negative, so bitter, to me, I don't like to be around negative people, and I'm going to tell you, because a negative person can never be happy for me because they're not happy for themselves. If you're that negative all the time, it's a problem because this is my thing in life. To learn, you always have to be open to other people's perspectives, even if you don't agree. You can agree to disagree, but you should never be disrespectful. You should always surround yourself with people that don't look like you, that don't speak like you, that are not from the same background, because that is when you will truly learn and grow. But with that said, I like your swag, because if people seeing you on the street, they wouldn't even know you were a police officer, right? They're only judging you based on your uniform. But I have to go. I have to get to some clients and get dressed. But it was nice talking to you. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, Continue to keep doing what you're doing because we need police officers like you in the field showing love and showing people that there's a different way and a different side to policing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And I go to therapy every week. So that's I, right. I, I, I that's appreciate right. it. And you keep doing what you're doing without people like you. We wouldn't be uh, mentally sound enough to continue to serve the, the public. So we need to continue to make ourselves well. So thank you so much. God bless you. And I'll, I'll stay you. on if you guys want me to stay on or whatever. You have a, I'm thank, just leaving thank, there. Not all, right, God. all right. Yeah, we, yeah, we're going to wrap it up, Jason, man. But um, yeah, show, um, give your handle so everybody can find you and tell them um, the website, anything like that. If they want to spend a day with you or any other officer, how they could build a relationship. With, you know what I'm saying? With officers or the people that do want to build a relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the, our, our Instagram is team wisdom. Like, why'd you stop me? Because that's the answer. We, that's the question we got to answer, right? Why'd you stop me? Um, so it's W Y S M team wisdom. That's our Instagram, my personal Instagram for everybody to follow. But I'll tell you right now, if you start throwing out negative words on my Instagram, you're done. So that's, that's my rules. I don't, I'm not a government entity or anything else. We, we, we keep things positive. So I will block the living heck out of you. So I just want you to know that. It's Jason <laughs> Lehman 64, L E H M A N 64, Jason Lehman 64. All views are welcome, but nothing that is just universal. We don't do the F everybody like you guys are writing right now. So um, <laughs> when, when, we, when we sit there and we look at that, the truth of the matter is that we want to build bonds. And if you guys want to look up our website, it's W Y S M dot o r g wisdom dot org we're based out of long beach california but we'll go anywhere we have been we have been to um five different states we've been to 50 plus cities and we've been able to do work all over the place but i want to stop and say I, gentlemen i appreciate you have for having me on here appreciate um, you as well it, it takes courage for me to come on here and it takes courage for you guys to talk to me and it takes courage for people that are different to an extent to sh to, to stop and see the similarities they have because everybody on this page has more similarities than differences. It doesn't matter whether you've been in jail or whether you've been a police officer, whether you've held a gun or you never held a gun. We got more similarities than we do differences. And if everybody on here works to get 2% better every day the right way, we will be more successful as a culture and as a community. And we have to unite. If we don't unite, things get worse. And we either get better or we get worse in life. So I hope that everybody here gets better. As God is my witness, I will continue to fight for justice for every single person, even the ones that are asking me about drugs and arresting cops and everything <laughs> else that you're asking me on here. Um, I can't sit here and look at this. It's and, too many to read. Just yeah, there's just it's <laughs> I mean, you guys, you, guys are, you guys are celebrities in this place. But I'm just saying it's really important for us to look at it from a, a, from a, a perspective that matters. If we judge one person for who they are, and we do that time in and time out, 
we will always be successful. If we judge one person for who we think they are or for the uniform they wear, we will almost always fail. So we have to sit there and we have to see the human being behind the uniform. When it comes to race, we have to see race, but we have to judge the individual behind that race. Race is not a uniform. It cannot be taken off. And so we have to understand the difference in these, in these different ideas because our job is to be able to serve one another. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a police officer or if you're working in janitorial services, whatever job there is, you have value, but your job is to, is to help serve. And this service is really, really important for us to have. So just know that uh, I'm out here if you guys need me, if there's anything I can do. Um, if you don't like me, um, it's okay. I probably don't like you either, but I'll respect it. <laughs> hey, hey, one thing though, man. Okay, if you man. see the grind face car in Long Beach speeding, look, look the other way. <laughs> <laughs> one time for real. Uh, all right, man. I, I, have a good day, man. I appreciate all you guys, all right, man. God bless. You, man. Maybe, maybe we'll do this again soon, man. You guys take yes, care. Sir. Yes, sir. All right. Stay all right, positive. Bye.